So what's the difference between restoration agriculture and permaculture? Well, uh, what's the difference between restoration agriculture and permaculture? In my mind, nothing. I was trained um, starting back in the early 1990s. My diploma comes from Bill Mollison himself, the founder of the permaculture movement. So in my mind, there is no difference between restoration agriculture and permaculture. However, through the years, the first adopters of permaculture were primarily urban and suburban folks that didn't have a land base and um, didn't have the ability to unfold the full spectrum of all of the different techniques and strategies that permaculture would allow you to do. And so it turned into a classic American um, uh, method of how do we find the cute little hot button things that is something that we can do that's different than other people and makes us look special. And so the mud ovens and the, and the you know, little uh, clay rocket stove or the herb spiral all, or the mandala garden all became really hot button things that every permaculturist had to do one. But what happened is it fell out of context with reality. Um, the rain barrel is a great example of something that's out of context with reality. It's a great idea to catch rainwater off your roof. Rain falls from the sky, a measurable amount of rain falls from the sky. It will strike your roof. Your roof is a measurable size. The rain that falls from the sky and the roof that catches it uh, is very specific. These are observational phenomena. And then those two phenomena together will generate a certain amount of water. So real permaculture design, from my perspective, would then say, okay, let's design a system to capture that resource. And you would do the math, figure out how much rain falls, how big is the surface area of your roof, now design how big your catchment is. That, to me, is real permaculture. Well, permaculture uh, that's disassociated from reality says, oh, let's put up a rain barrel. So you have a 40 by 40 roof that generates, oh, let's say 650 to 700 gallons of rain of water in a one inch rain, you put a 50 gallon rain barrel there, the roof catches the rain, it overflows, it floods your basement out, it gets black mold, everybody gets allergies and has to move to Mexico because Obamacare really doesn't work and the website never worked and the Republicans are trying to like have a conspiracy to overthrow all of the socialists on the planet. Um, why not design the system based on reality? How much rain falls from the sky? How big is your collection area? Now design a catchment system to actually catch that resource and utilize it. So restoration agriculture was my way to answer uh, a lot of these disassociations that I saw in the permaculture movement. And the biggest one being food. Is even if you live in Chicago or New York or L.A. or the suburbs thereof, and you have your whole entire yard done in permaculture, there's no way that you can produce enough food, the carbohydrates, proteins, and oils that you need to stay alive. You need staple food crops. You need, you need uh, the equivalent of beans and rice, noodles, uh, bread, etc. And that doesn't come from your front yard. And I have, I've been all around the world and I have seen approximately zero examples of anybody who has fed themselves from the front yard. Everybody is depending on farms for their staple food crops. So let's design farms to produce our staple food crops. And in the upper Midwest, the, the primary model that I'm using right here is the oak savanna. Let's use the Fagaceae family, the oak, chestnut, and beech, in my case, chestnuts here, and then the um, Betulaceae family, which is, includes the hazelnuts. Between the two of those, we have a complete uh, staple food crops nutrition. We have the carbohydrates, uh, primarily carbohydrates uh, and a complete protein from the chestnuts and we have a somewhat incomplete protein and three times the oil out of our hazelnuts. We have a staple food crops from a perennial system. We don't need to uh, destroy an ecosystem, plow up the ground and plant our beans and rice in order to survive. And if anybody thinks that their permaculture yard will feed them, I challenge you to all of a sudden not eat anything except from your yard right here, right now, and you'll probably go hungry before I will.